Video editing is an essential skill if you're gonna be a creator in 2023. And of all the software options out there, I personally think that Adobe Premiere Pro is the best to edit in. So let's break down everything you need to know about how to edit in Premiere Pro and how to get started today. I also wanna mention that Adobe offers a seven day free trial for anyone who wants to try Premiere Pro. So if you're not ready to put the money in, but you still wanna go ahead and follow along with this video, feel free to go hit the top link in the description and you can download it there. But let's get started. Okay, so now that you downloaded it and then you open Premiere Pro, this is the first menu you're gonna see. If you have recent files like I do, you're gonna see all of them listed here. Over here, if you wanna get started with a new project, which I'm sure you want to, go ahead and press the new project button. Top left, it's blue, you can't miss it. Now, go ahead and name your project for this sample. I'm just gonna name it test because this is a test project. Um, you can go ahead and choose your project location. For me, I'm gonna go ahead and just keep it in my downloads. Go down to the bottom right and hit create the blue button once again. Okay, so now that we're in the project window, you can see that there's a bunch of these boxes and squares and sections that look scary, but I promise they're easy and they're customizable so you can change it to make it work for you. In order to get started, you're probably gonna wanna go down here to the bottom left corner where it says project and go where it says import media to start and let's drag in some footage. So in my case, I wanna keep things organized and I'm sure you'd want to as well. So go ahead, press this little symbol down here. It's a new bin. You can make a new bin this way. Um, and let's label one of them footage. Let's make another one for audio. And let's make one more for sequences or nests because when we get into using those, you're gonna want a place to organize those as well. Okay, so now that we actually have our bins or our folders, we can go ahead and bring in our footage and our audio, which we're gonna do right now. So you can go ahead and drop in media two ways. If you're gonna bring in your footage for this case, let's go ahead and double click our footage bin. It'll open the bin. Double click the center gray area here like this, and it will bring in footage or media you drag in from whatever folder you choose. Or you can go ahead and press your finder or your Windows Explorer and then you can go ahead and drag in your footage and drag and drop like you would in any other software. Now we have three clips that I'm gonna use for this example. In our footage bin, we can go ahead and press this button right here to go back to the project bin so we can add our audio. So now we have both audio and music ready to go whenever we need to use it. So press that button once again, go back here. And let's go ahead and do one more thing, which we're gonna make a sequence. That is how you start every project ever. It's by making a sequence. You can do this two ways as well, but I'm gonna show you both. Go ahead, press new item down here in the bottom, press sequence. Now you're gonna be greeted with this sequence presets dialog box, but we're gonna skip this section and we're gonna go over here to settings. Now that we're in settings, we can actually choose what editing mode we wanna edit in. So in my case, I'm gonna scroll up from here, which my RE Cinema was the top one I used because I used that last, and we can go to custom. Now time base, in this case, it's gonna be how many frames per second. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose 29.97 because that's roughly what 30 is actually shot in on my camera. Frame size, I wanna keep it full HD, which is in fact 1920 by 1080. And now go down here to aspect ratio and make sure that you're selected on square pixels or a 1.0 ratio. Now go down here to sequence name at the bottom. We can name this test once again or name it after the project, whatever you wanna call it. Go ahead and press OK. Now we have a sequence that's dropped into our bin down here, our project bin. Alternatively to making the sequence the way we just did, you could also make a sequence by taking whatever footage or whatever clip you want your sequence to follow, and you can go ahead and drag that clip right into your timeline, your empty timeline, and make a sequence. This top right section of the screen or our program window was actually just created. Uh, it was either a black screen, like if I delete the video, it would take that, but in my case, I dropped a video in to make the sequence, so you see the video. That is known as our program, and that is where we view whatever is happening down here in the timeline. So if I edit this, and I shrink it down with scale, you'll see that now whatever I just did in the timeline down here also directly affects the program. So basically your program is just your viewer to what you're editing. Down here and arguably the most important section is your timeline. This is where you'll be piecing together clips. So you can see that we can stack things on top of each other. We can move things around. We can use the tools over here to edit whatever we'd like to do to our program, to our actual output and play around and actually make a video. Now up here, you'll see another important tab. Most likely the most important thing after the timeline would be your effect controls. This is how you can alter or use any of the properties that each clip has within it. So you can move your footage back and forth. You can change the opacity, right? You make it invisible. That is where you can change all your effects as well as any actual direct effects that you drop onto your footage. Speaking of, if you come down here and you scroll, which you can just scroll up and down, find your effects section. This is where all the effects that Premiere Pro has to offer built in or downloaded are gonna be housed. Nonetheless, the effect controls works directly with your timeline, which works directly with the effects panel if and when you need to drag an effect in. 
And a few more things I want to add include the tool panel where your tools like a pointer, cut, ripple, delete, rate stretch, and others live. Alternatively, you can also use their keyboard shortcuts on the screen here. Now, if you come up here to the top right and you press this, you can see other tabs and menus to access other parts of the editing software. And these include your color menu for color grading with Ometri Color, essential graphics for editing and adding text, graphics, and more. And finally, an audio menu where you can repair, audio, master it, and tweak it however you need. Now, of course, there are many more menus and a lot more features, but these are the ones you're going to need when you're getting started. But finally, let's say we're done editing our video. How do we export? What do we do? So make sure you're selected on your timeline. You can do this by making sure that there's a blue little outline around it. Go up here to export or press command or control M on your keyboard. So I'm going to go ahead and press command M. Now you can go ahead and name the file. Like I said, let's name this test. You can go here and choose where you want to save it. Let's just say I want to save it to my desktop for the sake of not choosing it. Go ahead, press custom because that's what we're going to keep it as and make sure that your format, unless you're exporting for a movie, you're going to be putting it on the internet most likely. Keep it at H.264. It's the best compression type and it exports as an MP4. Then you can go ahead and either match the source for your sequence to your actual video and then go ahead and you can press export down here in the bottom right and you're done. And that's it. Well, that's the fast simplified version of Premiere Pro. If you'd like to see a part two of this video where I go more in depth on everything I just talked about, let me know in the comments. I'll be glad to do so. But until then, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.